Oh, so today is one of those days that I come with so much material, I don't know what to focus on. The conversation around freedom is a very important conversation to me. I have um, lived a life inspired or, yeah, inspired by many great people. And one of the things that has mattered to me most is the support and the inspiration and the wisdom that found me along the, along the years and the places in my life that reminded me that I never had to be stuck at any point. It is one of my greatest frustrations in life when I engage other people outside this, well, if I engage you here, mostly, but when I engage individuals outside this teaching, especially who feel like, act like they don't have a choice. And you, and you know it, you see them, you see them come just, just um, give in to limitations. You see them. It, very often it doesn't even dawn on people that they have a choice. And it is absolutely one of my greatest frustrations is that I, I can't get into the mind and hearts of individuals and, and strike that point enough. Oh, if I was a wizard and could just wave a wand... I would wave a wand that said, wake up and know that you can have your life. Now, I'm, when I say that, and I, maybe where it gets dismissed is maybe it gets dismissed because people think that what we're saying is that you can be as rich as you want to, and then when you treat twice and you don't get rich, you think it doesn't work. Or when you have a life that's had a bit of struggle, and when you don't transform it right away, you think it doesn't work. Maybe it's because it's not always instantaneous. And yet, I have seen instantaneous I have seen instantaneous healings, and my practitioners, and some of you have also. So I'm not saying that that is not possible, but maybe in this fast pace, I get what I want when I get it. You know, God love Amazon and Prime. I'm, you know, guilty of Amazon. You know, I'll be in the middle of a conversation with you on the phone. You tell me some new book you just read. I'm on Amazon on my phone while I'm still talking to you, and it's ordered before we hang up. So I, too, am guilty of living a life that says that I can have what I want when I want it. You know, and I watch some of you, and I watch our children, and some of them just... They haven't learned, you know, that they can be present in a different way because they're so busy, you know, they're so busy being hypnotized with their, with their iPads and such. Hi, they, you. So, but freedom comes to us in many ways, and it has come to many people, many very famous people, and it came in different places. Now, the freedom I'm talking about is the freedom to not be stuck in who you think you were. And you know many of these names. Stephen Hawking was pretty much a dilettante until after he contracted ALS, when then he discovered his sense of purpose. Dilettante, do you know what that means? I didn't. I had to look it up. It means one who is uh, amused by art and, and, uh, and beauty, just for the art and beauty of it, but he, did, he, wasn't, he didn't see himself as an academic at that time. Malcolm X found his freedom in prison. So did Anwar Sadat. You know this one, Viktor Frankl found his freedom in Auschwitz. Stripped of every last ounce of dignity that could possibly be given to any human, stripped of every last ounce of div dignity and every last possession that had any meaning to him. And he found the freedom to say, no more, you won't have me. Buckminster Fuller found his when standing on the shore of Lake Michigan contemplating suicide. Most of us probably didn't know that. 
Johnny Coleman, who you probably don't know, and some of you might know her name, a very revered minister, wonderful, lovely, amazing African-American minister, found hers when the doctor told her she was going to die from an incurable disease. She's told she's going to die, and she finds the strength and the resolve to say, you will not take me this way. That, my dear folks, you can call it many things. You can even call it miraculous. But that first was the freedom that she found within herself to want for something more for herself. Pierre Teilhard de Chardin wrote the phenomenon of man after the church isolated him in a remote mission in China to shut him up. Many of the wise people that you read were isolated, imprisoned, and they tried to shut them up. Nelson Mandela, absolutely. Mother Teresa found her work when the church said no, and she went ahead anyway. Crazy Horse found his, uh, his freedom, his enlightenment, if you want to call it that, while fasting and meditating in a sweat lodge on the Ogallala Plains. Franklin Merrill Wolf was chipping away in an abandoned gold mine when he had the cosmic enlightenment that led to his classic, classic book's pathway through to space and the philosophy of consciousness without object. It could be found anywhere. It could be found everywhere. But it is available Right now, as you sit before me, that thing that you think is bigger than you is not. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Because I don't feel like you're hearing me. Yes. Please, because this is, this is what matters. It matters that we show up that way with our kids. It matters we show up that way with everyone. Let me tell you what freedom is not. Freedom is not feeling like you could say anything you want to anyone, anytime, just downright rude and cold and mean and sarcastic. That's not freedom. That's just rude. Freedom is ta not taking from another, another that which they don't want to give. That is not freedom. Judging and gossiping and being committed to your opinion that's filled with limitations. That's not freedom. That's pain. What it is is not being limited to yes. To, so wait, this is what freedom is. I just want to make sure I differentiate there. Not being limited to yesterday's version of you. You get that? Here's the, even five minutes ago, and you know, here's one problem. I, I have more of that, but here's the problem with that, and I've been feeling this lately because I've been doing a lot of deep introspection. I've been doing a lot of forgiveness work. I've been doing extra meditation. I've been doing extra prayer. I am in practice. I've been guiding us to be in practice, the, the musicians, the, the bookstore. No matter where we are, we are in prayer, and we are into submitting over to the one. Okay? Here's the problem. Not the problem. The, the potential experience. When you do this and you do your work and you have moments of waking up, all of a sudden, I don't know about you, this is probably not you. Maybe this is only me. But when I wake up, I realize what a total schmuck I was. I have moments of realizing that I wasn't kind and I wasn't the nice person and that I was sarcastic and that I didn't always behave in ways that was kind. So all of a sudden, here I am. So I'm going, I'm going, I'm going because I believe in the freedom. So I'm moving within my freedom to find a new me. I find the new me, and all of a sudden, the juxtaposition of the me that I choose to be with who I was is painful. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Thank you for not hanging me out dry. So what, it, while we are finding the freedom, we must couple that freedom 
with compassion for ourselves, with forgiveness of ourselves. And I, I have a feeling, I have a sneaking suspicion that that's why sometimes we like new friends. Because new friends don't have what we were. They don't remember. I have the sneaking suspicion that's why family gatherings are so painful. Because I remember you back when. So what happens is very often with family members, we don't give each other the permission to transcend our way of being, and we keep thinking that we were the way we were. You with me? You want to love somebody? Let them be who they are, not who they were. Don't keep looking at who they were because then you're dragging it into their present day for them. You with me? If you really want to be kind, let them, help them let it go. As you let it go for yourself. That is freedom. Freedom is cultivated uh, when you... Um, duh, 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 duh. Oh, cultivating the freedom to move forward and to resolve whatever you have to resolve and to build the, the resolve and the strength within yourself to do this work. Realizing the faults, the failures, and the sins. This is what I was just referring to. And choosing not to be at the mercy of them. The, the individuals that go through the 12 steps, they have a wonderful step. And it is taking personal inventory. Revealing that personal inventory to someone. I've also, I often thought, if I was actually an alcoholic, would I have the courage to spill my guts to somebody? And I'm not sure that I would. I'm not sure. I speak a lot. I tell a lot. But I'm not 100% clear. So I, I and myself am currently still building the, the strength and the self-love to be willing to do that. Because as long as I or you or any one of us, as long as we carry shame, there's a lack of movement. We can't talk about freedom and hide behind shame. It doesn't work. You with me? It doesn't work. You must, 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 must forgive yourself. You must love yourself under all conditions. Dr. David Walker, who's now no longer with us, one of our beloved ministers, said to have a decided mind. So decide. And that decided mind is something you decide at every moment. Decide now. Decide now in your own heart, in your own mind, that I'm worthy of newness. I'm worthy of the freedom. I'm worthy of letting go. I'm worthy of self uh, self-compassion and self-forgiveness. You decide. You don't wait to earn. You decide. Yes? So here's the thing. If we have the freedom, if we have the freedom to not be who we were, to not be at the mercy of who we were, we have to find that place within us where we pray ceaselessly. Sounds a little exhausting, doesn't it? When you, if you think about it, the, probably the way you, maybe you, when you ever you heard that statement, like, are you kidding? All day long, I'm going to be on my knees. I'm going to be beseeching God. I mean, that might be an old idea. But here's the beauty. Here's the, here's the problem, and here's the beauty. The, pro, the, the beauty is that the prayer, in the way I'm referring to it, spiritual mind treatment, is not something that we stop and do. It's who we are that we are the act of a live prayer by every thought. Because here, and then here's the problem, every thought is a prayer. So, what are you praying into being? Are you praying your problems into being? Are you praying your jealousy into being? Are you praying your limitations into being? Are you praying through your judgment and your criticism? Because if that's your language, your self-talk that's in your mind when you're quiet and when you're alone, if that is your self-talk, you are praying ceaselessly for pain and suffering. And that's the truth. 
that praying ceaselessly we must do is you and I cannot afford to not clean up our language and our thinking. I don't know if you're on my Facebook page at all, either at Rev Jersey Girl or the Center. I put out a thing last week, and I said, I am begging and beseeching everyone I know, my family, my friends, everybody I know, to clean up your language and your thinking. You can't afford it. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You hear me? Every word, every prayer, every thought. Every, almost every summer, not every summer, but almost every summer, I ask you to consider, to consider um, practicing non-complaining. Sometimes I ask you not to also consider non-gossip. I'm bringing it back. I am asking everyone sitting here and then whoever's not here next week, the same people, the additional people, to commit for the summer to non-complaining and non-gossip. Not out loud. Not in your own mind. Not with your best friend. Not when you think it's safe. And I promise you, hands down, I promise you, if it doesn't work, you, I'll, I'll pay you money. If you do it and you say this doesn't work, I'll give you money. I'm not saying how much money, but I'll give you money. I am telling you, when you cease the gossip and complaining in any form, you will find a bounty of energy with, with, with which you can use that freedom of the recreating of yourself. You hear me? So I don't mean to set you up, but I am. You don't have to raise your hand. You don't. I am asking you if you are willing to take this on till well, how many days in August? Somebody help me out. 30? 31? I can't get that right. Do you know that last month in the Creative Thinking magazine, we added a day or June? <laughs> And we discovered it after the magazine was like almost done. Right, Dan? Oh, well. It's open at the top, right? Maybe June wants another day. Who knows? I am asking you, if you are willing to practice for the next however many days this is till August 30th to raise your hand to non-gossip and non-complaining. Okay. Okay, thank you. Now, you might want to know, what is gossip? Gossip is any time you talk about anything other than you. Now, I can tell you, I can tell Sandra an experience I had maybe about Tony. I can talk about my experience. However, if I'm talking about Tony to Sandra, I want to look at what is my motivation. Why? Am I doing that? Am I trying to get Sandra to comply with me, to collude that Tony isn't all that? What's my purpose? Gossip for our purpose, it could change after the, it could change after the summer. For our purpose is when you talk about anything other than yourself or your own experience, okay? So you're clear what we're looking at. Now, I wrote something for this past month's um, July Creative Thinking. And I would like to ask someone who's willing to come up and read this aloud. Sandra, please. Thank you. Come on up. I'll just set it up. This is 18 expressions of freedom that we all deserve but do not equally enjoy. In the middle of putting this list together, I, wrote, I started to write, and it was titled something like, 18 Freedoms I Can't Live Without, and then quickly realized there are many of my own people here, my community, that live without these freedoms. 
So I changed it into that we all deserve but do not all enjoy. One, the freedom to be who I am. Two, the freedom to try and fail and try again. Three, the freedom to have an opinion and to express it. Four, the freedom to love whomever I want to love. Five, the freedom to live wherever I want to live. Six, the freedom to partner with whomever I want to partner. Seven, the freedom to dress in any fashion that pleases me. Eight, the freedom to choose my own spiritual path. Nine, the freedom to walk down any street. Ten, the freedom to be politically involved. Eleven, the freedom to stand for what I believe. Twelve, the freedom to object or affirm and do something about it. Thirteen, the freedom to follow my inspiration and to express it. Fourteen, the freedom to work for myself or another. Fifteen, the freedom to forgive. Sixteen, the freedom to travel. Seventeen, the freedom to sing out loud, to dance widely, and to express with total abandon. And 18, the freedom to love God in any form, by any name, at all time. Thank you. Thank you. Sweet accent, huh? Lovely. So this is part one of a three-part series that's going to be interrupted just by one week because Reverend Joel is here next week because I have the freedom to take off on Sundays. So yeah, the next week I'm going on retreat again because I find that my soul gets filled when I take care of my soul. And going on retreat does that for me. So I'll be away for three days and Reverend Joel, who's hands you are always in good hands with will be here. But this week is freedom, and it's about you, your language, your thinking, your daydreaming. The last two Sundays are called Partnerships in Possibility. And we're going to talk about prayer partnerships, and we're going to talk about partnerships in groups that can either look like mastermind or can just look like spiritual partnerships. And we are going to, and I thank Brian Jude, I always like to thank my inspiration, uh, who he felt very strongly that we do more and more to promote partnerships. Life changes when someone holds you up spiritually. So this week and the last two weeks of June are all about taking this teaching and applying it in every way possible. So I will be back to to do that with you. And I invite you, if you can't be here, to at least listen in and get all three of the weeks. We are also going to videotape each of these weeks. So they will be on our, they will be on our website. So hold the hand of someone next to you, if you will. Connect. Oh, okay. And someone supporting me here? Yeah, thank you. So what I know right now is that there is a sweetness in the air that we feel by proxy of this community. That this community is here to receive each of us, to love us, to accept us as we are. And what I know right now that the presence and the power of the one is lifting us You think you are sitting upon a chair, but you're not. You're sitting upon an agreement of this, of the, of of molecules that agree to be that chair that you can sit upon. 
And you think you're walking on a floor, but it's an agreement of the intelligent life itself that agrees to be the chair and to remain solid that you may walk upon the floor. There is no place in your life, not now, not ever, that is not supported by the one, by any name. There is no outside, there is no otherness. There's you being loved, you being supported, you being guided. There's your wisdom, your inspiration. And I know for each person present here today, every person that listens to the podcast, that watches the video, I know for every person with ears to hear that we each remember to by, by the words of our mouths, by the thoughts that we think, by the very beating of our heart, that we become the being that we choose to be each and every single day of our lives, that we are the change now and forever. Now and forever. Let us feel the source sourcing itself to us right now. Let us not believe the lies. Let us not believe the distractions. Let us just make room for and allow for the one to be the one as us. By every name. By the name of John, by the name of Bernalee, by the name of Sandra, by the name of Sylvia, by the name of David, by the name of Mary, by the name of Richard, by the name of Penny, by the, the name of every single one of us, by each name we are known. And Spirit has put its thumbprint upon us and made us a unique individualization of this one. Let us feel it, know it, love it, and have bold, bold gratitude for it. I am so grateful for this teaching. I am so grateful for this community. I am so grateful for that which inspires me always. Please join me in releasing this word to the one, to the law, and to the awe of life itself by saying, and so it is. Ashe. Thank you.